Hello and welcome to this episode of the Spiced In Podcast. My name is Jacob and welcome to the show that is for and by Star Wars Addicts. This week we're going to be talking about the Dr. Aphra original audio drama as well as our, you know, weekly Star Wars news update. So starting off with the news, we saw, we got our first real look at the Tales from the Galaxy's Edge VR title. Uh, the game will be coming out later this year on Oculus Quest only so far. Hopefully we'll be getting a Rift port. You know, I say that especially as a Rift owner myself, but also, I mean, right now it's not looking good. They, uh, Facebook came out and said they're pretty much discontinuing support for the Rift next year. Uh, so hopefully that game will still get ported, but it is quite possible that it will not. Uh, with the Oculus Quest 2 coming out uh, in October... Uh, the Rift is basically a dead uh, platform at this point, which is sad, uh, seeing as I just freaking bought mine. But anyways, uh, it seems like the game's going to be more of a like an anthology kind of story, so you see like little bits and, you know, tales. You're seeing little bits of story. You know, there'll be some during the Resistance Age. There'll be, it looks like there's some during maybe potentially the Clone Wars. Uh, they said Yoda would be involved, so I guess the list of everyone had traveling to Batuu is getting longer and longer. So, yeah, okay, but yeah, it looks interesting. You're just kind of, it seems like you're going to be like, the game's probably going to be like, take place in Cecil Slack's cantina, and you'll kind of just be told different tales and stories from Black Spire Outpost that you might live in flashbacks. So that's kind of what it looks like it's going to be that comes out sometime this year. Date has not been announced quite yet. Uh, for The Mandalorian, uh, obviously the big news is this past Tuesday we got the new trailer. If you want to see my thoughts on that, you can check out the Spiced In on YouTube. I did a full trailer breakdown talking about all the different details I picked out of it. had a lot of fun with that, and I think it's going to be a really good season, uh, so I'm excited to do that. The Mandalorian also had a bunch of Emmy awards that it brought home. I think it had like, oh, it was nominated for like 14 awards or something like that, and won quite a few, so it's great to see uh, it the show be critically uh, well received as well as you know obviously it's very popular amongst us fans uh so that's great uh and then the this past week the star wars and darth vader comic books came back uh their new issues came out for the first time in a little bit and i <laughs> i have you know i'm not caught up i'm i'm working on it slowly but surely but the from the reception i've seen on the internet these issues look really hype i'm excited to catch up it's like almost enough for me just like to because the um, for especially for Star Wars issue six, um, Marvel Limited would let me read the first three for free, and I was like, well, I could just read those and then buy the next three in Comicsology and then be good. Uh, but I'm gonna hold off a little bit. So that's that for channel news. By the time you hear this, hopefully I'll have either the Razor Crest video out or maybe it'll be out probably by Friday at the latest. Uh, the Lego Razor Crest Lego build. Uh, did that with my girlfriend last weekend and uh, had a lot of fun with that so uh have the video recorded and everything it just has to edit it down and speed it up so it's not you know you watching me build lego for two and a half hours uh but yeah it's a really cool set and a lot of fun to build you know hopefully just like the resistance to y-wing it'll make a fun kind of little video to watch that whole build process and then, so yeah, this week we're talking about the Dr. Afra audio drama. I am anticipating to not have a show the next two weeks. My LSAT is the weekend, of, well, the first weekend of October, so the same weekend as Star Wars Squadrons comes out. So I'm going to uh, not probably focus too much on Star Wars in that time. I've started Queen's Peril, and I'm about a quarter of the way through that, but I'm probably not going to touch it in the next two weeks. So my plan will be for the, probably skip two weeks of podcast, Come back, uh, and then well, and then yeah. After that, do a Queen Shadow review. Uh, I also probably you know the weekend after or the weekend of the Squadrons release. Once I'm done with my test, I might just do like a, a stream for fun on that. I'm not sure if I'll do Twitch or YouTube. Um, so check me out on social media at Spiced and Pod and on Twitter and Instagram if you want updates on when that's gonna happen. Uh, but I'll definitely be doing some streams with my Hotas. And then also maybe uh, some VR as well, seeing, you know, we'll see how I enjoy that. So, yeah, uh, that's probably about it. And uh, we're going to hop into our discussion of the Dr. Afra audio drama at this point. So here we go. All 
so this one's going to be kind of short. It, the audio drama, I found it to be quite enjoyable. Uh, you know, Dooku Jedi Lost was such a good format. Although I didn't really love the like the story delivery mechanic for that. Um, how it's like featured around all these audio logs. I really enjoyed it. I think it added a, like a lot. You know, there's a lot of unique original story. Uh, it was incredibly interesting. The problem with the Doctor Aphra audio drama, I think it's very enjoyable, but it's pretty much just a retreading of comic book story. So, like, the main overall plot is the, like, first couple arcs of the Darth Vader comic from 2015 with Doctor Aphra. So, I've read all of those before. So, that's not nothing, that's nothing new. It's a great story, but if you've read the comic, it's, you know, it's not adding a whole lot. But then, in between, it adds some of the first couple issues of the Dr. Aphra standalone comic book series to kind of flesh out her backstory. So I have not read those yet. So that was kind of interesting. Not like I got something new there, but if you've, if you're current on comic books, this is going to be nothing new to you. Uh, it, so if you're a huge Dr. Aphra fan or like a canon completionist, you know, go for it. If you are not, I don't know if this is for you. Um, uh, if you've read all the comic books and you don't care, or if you just don't care about this character in general, obviously, then you're not going to want to listen to this. Um, you know, if you, I will, if you do have audible credits, then why not? But it's, uh, it's, it's good. Like, I will not, like, I can't take that away from it. I think it is a good audio drama overall. It's just not, ad- it's not adding anything special or new, I don't think. From a voice cast standpoint, uh, you got Mark Thompson as Darth Vader, who's obviously always fantastic. I think Dr. Afra was uh was well voiced. Um most of the voices I think as a whole were great. The production value was great. Um you had all the great sound effects and music and I think it really made it a great experience whereas it could have just been, you know, a couple like three or four people reading a script straight. There was all this extra production value which uh carried it quite a bit. I <laughs> I had a few issues with a few of the the voice actors. Triple Zero, like, I mean, the the voice itself was fine. It was not what I expected. It was basically, like, English butler voice. Uh, I, like, when I was reading the comic books, I always kind of expected, like, uh, a deep, distorted kind of C-3PO. Um, almost like, kind of like, like a Dalek from Doctor Who, something like that. Um, yeah, it's like, a, but, like, deeper. Like, a deep, distorted, kind of messed up sounding voice. That's what I was, I, like, envisioned. But, no, it's just, like straight Englishman, um, which, I mean, I guess it kind of, it plays with your expectations, you know, you have this crazy murderous droid, but at the same time, you still a protocol droid, uh, so I, I, I can see why that would be, like, an interesting dichotomy there, um, th- I think outside of Darth Vader, uh, I think it struggles with its pre-existing characters, uh, for voices at times, like, well, like, the ones from movies. Luke, I honestly thought was fine. Like, I don't have any issues with that. Uh, and Han Solo was okay. Or no, was it? I'm trying to remember. I think Han Solo is definitely fine. Leia, I didn't super buy. They they used Catherine Tabor, who is the voice actress for Padme. And I think she's a great voice actress. I just like, I don't get I don't get Carrie Fisher vibes when I listen to her. Uh, and yeah, Luke, I think was a little bit off as well. Um, but you know, it's, it's tough to match these, these people in real life. Um, so I, like, I understand it. It just, it breaks the immersion just a little bit. Uh, so that's that. I think, yeah, overall it's quite enjoyable. Is it for everyone? No, but, uh, like I, I really enjoyed it. The story is still great. Like these are some of the like best com. I mean, I don't know about the best comic books. They are very, very solid comic books to adapt. So I think that's fantastic. I love the audio drama, audio drama format, and I would like to see more. Similar to Dooku Jedi Lost, I it's I don't know why they feel the need to like uh, frame these as like an audio journal that the character's recording for someone else. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I mean I don't super get why you need to do that. Just like let it exist as its own story. It doesn't have to. Um, there doesn't have to be a reason for it to exist outside of the fact that it's a story. Like you know. We don't close, I didn't close Thrawn Ascendancy Chaos Rising a couple weeks ago and, and like see at the very last page. And that is my adventure in the years of the Chiss Ascendancy, thus signed Admiral Thrawn. It's like, 
no one like nothing else does that like i don't see why we keep going back to this format i really hope the next audio drama is just a story in a universe no framing device just let it exist as such like every once in a while uh afro would be like oh computer mark that for me to delete that later and never once was i like yes that definitely enhanced my enjoyment of the story it's just like okay whatever especially because you hear it multiple times and it's all you know there are some times where it actually like it does i think go away but like you hear maybe like 10 times or a dozen times in the story it's like mark that for, for editing later or mark that for deletion and then you it does you know it's still you still hear it so it's still there so i don't know if we just got like her rough draft of her her uh audio logs or what but yeah yeah i don't really know what else to say i think the one the coolest thing i found uh out of this was a detail that came from the Dr. Afro standalone comics that I still have yet to get to and that was the Ordu Aspectu so it's something her father her father was another like academic uh who was really interested in the Jedi and one thing he was studying was the Ordu Aspectu uh which they talk about a little just a little bit uh, I thought it was so cool I did a little research on it on Wikipedia so I'm just gonna share with you uh, what I found on that, it's a super short article, uh, on the, on the wiki. Uh, but basically it was a, like, fat, a, like, splintered sect of the Jedi Order that existed thousands of years ago, uh, and was, uh, housed on Yavin 4. Uh, so they basically, yeah, they were this splinter group that lived in the Great Temple on Yavin 4. And their their main goal was like they were against violence and wanted to uh, prolong life for all beings and just like kind of this weird cultish group. But I mean their 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 goals don't sound weird, uh, but they were at, at odds with the regular kind of Jedi of the era, uh, and were the, their cult was ended back then. I think it's kind of interesting. Like it seems like a very cool idea. We don't really see these. At- Jedi from the outside of the order that often. I mean, there's Ahsoka, I think would be the kind of like the closest parallel I could drive to draw to this. Uh, I'm wondering if we're going to see more of this with the High Republic, where we know that there are a number of Jedi that leave the order. Obviously, the time timeline wise, it's not the same group, but I, like maybe they had some inspiration from this or the order or or do. Um, I think that's interesting. I really hope we get this um, more fleshed out uh, in the future. But other than that, yeah, I think um, this is a super short one, uh, but I, I really enjoyed the audio drama. Uh, I Yeah, I'm not going to go for the story of it. I've already done a, a past podcast on some of the Darth Vader comics, and I might actually have a new project that's going to talk more about comics in the future. So I'm not going to really waste anyone's time with that. But overall, I uh, would recommend... Yeah, I mean, with caveats, if you don't really care, or if you don't like audiobooks, obviously no. Uh, if you don't care about Dr. Aphra, no. And if you've read the comic books and you're kind of just satisfied, uh, I would say there are other things you could tackle first before getting around to this audio drama. So uh, that's that. Pretty short one. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you liked what you heard, check me out. At Spiced in Pod on Twitter and Instagram, The Spiced in on YouTube, thespicedin.com uh, for articles and reviews and such. And uh, yeah, thanks to Gramble for providing music for this episode. And as always, may the force be with you. <laughs> <laughs>